This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. In the game of health coverage, Farm Bureau Health Plans is the MVP. Tennesseans have relied on their unmatched rates, coverage, and service for over 77 years. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and this is Annie Oxone Jelly Roll. Hey, hey, hey. I'm glad to be on the show. Thank you. <laughs> He's one of the OT people, He's too. He's one of the I OT of, people, you I'm an OT people, dude. Oh, it makes me so happy. Thank it you. warms my heart. Especially during when the rookie, the rookie training camp this year, mm -hmm. I was really cool. It was my only way to get insight into who these people were was when they'd come sit right here. Yeah. So that was really, really cool to be a Titan fan. And anybody who's not watching, it's missing out, man. This is, this is real inside sausage here. So this is well, cool. We're glad you're in the <laughs> Bet MGM studio. We're glad you're at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park. I was just reading, you were just in the Hamptons? I was. I did a serious XM party this weekend at Stephen Talk House. It was awesome. Whoa. And who would have thought my white trash butt would be in the Hamptons, right? <laughs> well, but I'm sitting there going from Antioch to the Hamptons, and let's see, it's Bradley Cooper uh, and... Jimmy Fallon, Howard Stern, the cast, the Smartless podcast was there, Bateman and the boys. I got to stop for just a second. Yeah. Your interview with Howard Stern... Yeah. What, Howard yeah. Stern is the best interviewer going. Yes. He yeah. is phenomenal. But that piece, I stayed in my car and, and sat there. I didn't have the air conditioning on, but I sat there to listen for 30 minutes because I didn't want to get out of the car. It was fabulous. God, thank you, man. i tell you a cool Stern story. As I seen him this weekend at the Sirius XM at the Stephen Talk House. And I'm standing backstage, and I'm going out to do a photo op with him and Smartless. And uh, I keep hearing, a, some guy keeps coming back going to say, hey, Howard wants to make sure him and Jelly get to, chat, get to hang. So when I come out, you know, Howard's famously uh, 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 OCD. He won't, he won't yeah, like to touch that's right. And I walk out. He doesn't go, like to shake hands. Uh, I come in, I go, Howard, man, I know, but you know, he said, you know I want a hug from the Jelly. <laughs> and he comes and Howard gave me the warmest hug. It was really cool, man. Well, he was genuinely touched by your story. His research is always fantastic. And I don't think he knew you as well as maybe we do, knowing the backstory. And he was fascinated to delve into it, and, right. and you certainly gave him a lot. Yeah, we had a good, we had a really good conversation. It was, a, it was one of the few mornings I was glad I woke up early. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sorry, Amy, I, no. I had to ask. Well, but I mean, I think it goes to show you've done so many awesome things. I feel like you have been all over the place. You've been at award shows. You're, I mean, I watched you on New Year's Eve. Like you've yes. been everywhere. <laughs> What have been some of the coolest moments that you've been able to have? Some of those things that really have stuck out to you as, oh my gosh. Man, I would say that's a really good question. Thanks for asking. Grammys, the Grammys are always a big one. Winning CMA New Artist of the Year. All the award shows, the ACM, CMTs, these are just nights you never forget because you're being, uh, you're being celebrated on national TV. You know what I mean? Those are the things you never forget. But uh, behind the scenes has been just meeting my heroes meeting Dolly Parton, meeting Garth Brooks, just meeting the people that made me want to write songs has been probably the, the, the ch uh, choke slamming somebody at SummerSlam. Yeah. My inner child was exploding. I got slimed at the Kids' Choice Awards. Just stuff that you watch on TV that you don't even really dream because it's so far beyond a dream, and you're doing it. You're like, I would have never even thought about this when I was nine years old watching somebody get slimed. The, the choke slam, though, looked so it good. How, how many times did you practice? Man, we, we worked it out back a lot. That day, a couple hours, me and Austin did. Here's a shoot on that whole thing, and I hadn't got to shoot on this yet, is that's all Austin theory, man. That <laughs> kid, he He's a talent. did everything he could to make me look great. And I, and I want to properly thank him. Thank you, Austin. I've, every interview, I've kind of done the work thing, you know, ah, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get him again. He put you over. <laughs> he put me over. Austin gave me the rub, and, and he... He, he took a bump and put his image on the line to make me look good that night, and I'll never forget him for Didn't it. Didn't hurt him. Well done. Yeah, well done. All right, sorry. Gosh, <laughs> but, but I mean, think about it. <laughs> Things that you never in your wildest dreams thought you'd be able to do, and they keep coming. Like, this is just the beginning for you. We were talking about the tour you're about to go on. Yes. I, I mean, can you even believe that this is this is what you get to do and that all of your hard work is paying off? Oh, dude, being at the tour is mind-blowing, but I've toured my whole life. Even more mind-blowing to a degree is being here, right? Because really? I've been, it's my, you know, this is my first time being at uh, Ascension St. Thomas's you know, uh -huh. practice, real practice facility. So I've never been here, so it's like a really big deal. Like, there's a kid in me that's exploding. My, my father, who my late father, who I talk about all the time, uh, brought me to my first Titan game in Memphis when they first came, and I'll never forget the story. We were Dallas Cowboy fans like the rest of America. 
And as soon as we signed to buy that team, my father came in with a bunch of Titan gear and said, everybody bring your Dallas Cowboy stuff upstairs. And we all came upstairs and dropped off our Dallas Cowboy jerseys and we all put on Titans jerseys. He said, we are from Nashville, Tennessee. We, we will always represent local. And it was a big deal to him to be a Titan fan. Do you remember the first game you saw in Memphis who we were playing? I don't. It was whatever that first home game was. I mean, okay. we went down early because I remember was I was that just, Raiders game where it was a million degrees. Was that it? It, it was scorching yeah. hot mm -hmm. in the July. I felt yeah. like the season started in early August. It was miserably hot. It was outside at uh, where the Memphis uh, Tigers play. Yeah. And then the next season we came to Vanderbilt. And we went to all the Vanderbilt games. Wow. So you know, to be a to be a lifelong Titan fan, this is cool. Never pulled for another team. And walking when I was in kid. front of the team today. Wow. I mean, That's crazy. The, I mean, the fellas, you're, yeah. you're walking in there. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, for some of the stuff you've been through to think that now that's the kind of stuff. I mean, when you were 15, you could have never envisioned. That. Never would have envisioned that, especially watching the Music City Miracle happen over at that juvenile detention facility. I watched it out of my cell in the B unit facing this direction. And uh, from going from that to being here and meeting the boys and talking to the coach and just just the love around the whole building, sitting with y'all on OTP and, you know, I mean, uh, seeing ev I mean everybody from Nate to Burke that have become friends of mine in this building. It feels like you know this organization has really stood behind me as a local kid. It's really cool. You know what I appreciate so much is that he's I've seen him with some other NFL teams at their stadiums and stuff. I mean, oh, yeah. he's been. Around. But you never, you never drop the whole. You're a Titans guy, and I, I appreciate you being polite to him because I'm sure they're nice people. But thank you for I say thank you for respect. always representing. Yeah, I say this with respect. They give me a jersey in every city I go to as a, a staple of the arena or stadium sure. we mm -hmm. play, and I and I cherish them and I hang them up, but I never wear them. I'm a Titan fan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's okay. The things that make you want to crush. I know. No, but I mean to. To have an organization and a, a football team that means so much to you that you can have followed from the very beginning, that, I mean, these are the fans that, that well, we all work but he's, for. But he's more than that because he's proud to be from here. Yeah. And for those of us that have grown up here and have seen, I mean, and the Titans are just a part of it and, right. and a special part of it, obviously, to us, but... To see this city grow up, the region grow up, to all the people doing so well and doing so many great things, the people who are moving here, it's that's all special. It's all special, man. What's happening in this town is special. Getting to see, I think this is probably the third or the fourth time in the franchise that I've got to see it completely clean its slate, meaning that I'm going to go stand in front of a very few veterans in that locker room today. You know what I mean? And that's exciting for me because anytime we've had a new Titan team, it was like a, it was like a, you know, a new chance for us. So, but watch it. I was thinking about even outside of the Titans and you a local, you'll get this. I remember how big a deal it was when we got the Bridgestone arena in the mid nineties. Oh, sure. When Phil Bredesen announced that on TV, that was like, and I also remember how mad people were at first here. Like hockey here. Right. And yeah. we were such dumb Southern people. When we watched our first hockey game, they had to explain it on the jumbo trial what was happening. Nuh -uh. Yeah. And they tried to make it real easy. They was like, this is icing. <laughs> and it would be like a tutorial. I'm not making at this up. At least they didn't start with this <laughs> is ice. Yeah. yeah that, that would have been a little too that dumb. Like, know your audience. I remember me and my dad being there and I'm going, you get it. He goes, not yet. I was like, all right, I got it now. We're Predators fans. But they too. hit each other and they, they're, they're <laughs> skate really fast. It was fun, but more than anything, it was ours. But and the, that's how my father looked at stuff. Well, but I mean, I remember when the sounds came. Me too. Ooh, Ooh. I don't remember that. But my family grew up right by right by yeah. that part and, of town. And right I mean, Greer those Stadium. things as they've developed, the arena's a big deal, getting the SEC basketball tournament, and then this new stadium, knowing mm. what's going to happen. You it's know. a whole different level. I mean, knowing the Super Bowl. You know how coming. unreal it would be if I got to be the first artist to play it? That's my unofficial dream. Well, is I that mean, they let me open that thing up. Somebody's got to play it. There's got to be gotta a first. Somebody's got to be the first person to hang speakers up and do a concert, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you're throwing your I'm hat throwing in my the ring. in the hat immediately, right? Now, I'm throwing my hat in the ring. Hey, somebody, if y'all need an opening act, I'm your guy. He's the guy. <laughs> You've seen so many different places around the country, around the world. Beyond the fact that you're from here, why is this place always going to be home, no matter what you see? Well, growing up here, um, it goes back to, we'll keep it about the Titans. I have, my father walked me into that stadium the first time on the first day that it was open. I remember the excitement walking through there to find our seats. 
I remember sharing that exact same excitement with my four-year-old daughter the first time I put her on my shoulders and marched her into Nissan Stadium too. Uh, she's 16 now and we watch Titans game religiously. It's most of our text thread on Sunday. It's a connection. It's a way for us to connect. It was a way for me and my father to connect. It's a way for families to connect. Um, my, all my memories are here. Why would I want to live anywhere else? You know, I got a lot of bad ones here, but I got a lot of good ones, man. I've done a lot of, a lot of really cool stuff here. I, I know everybody. Um, I tell people that they don't treat me like a celebrity at home. They treat me like a local. Now, they'll want to take a picture, but they don't, they don't treat me. They treat me like a local kid. They don't come up and talk to me about music very much. They come up and talk to me about the Titans or the Predators or complaining about potholes. You know what I'm saying? They all know. You say I'm not the mayor. Yeah, they all I mean, know the mayor likes me, so now yeah. I get that all the time. Hey, you tell that mayor there's a pothole on 65 South you could fill a <laughs> pool up with. <laughs> Who is the best or the most exciting collaborator you've had so far? Ooh, I have one, but. The Eminem video came out today. Eminem is yeah. so I there's mean, a little biasism. Uh, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. I mean, go ahead and promote. Go yeah, ahead. yeah. Go the ahead. Eminem video is out today. Uh, somebody saved me. Um, that was probably the biggest. I mean, when you talk about, I was. If I know more songs of mine than anybody else's, it's probably Eminem and Garth Brooks and Willie Nelson. I could probably sing more Willie Nelson songs than I could Jelly Roll songs. Um, I, that kind of shows you my musical range too, right? Sure, it's <laughs> good. Uh, what well, makes total sense yeah, for who yeah. you are musically? It makes total sense. So, getting to work with Eminem, it don't. That was it. Man. Were you actually in the room with him, or did you? Record? We did not. But I have okay. got to hang out with him two or three times since. The day we shot the video, we spent like twelve hours on set together all day, hanging out. Uh, whenever I went and did the uh, did the Seeger song for Detroit for the Detroit Motor City thing where they were opening up the new building there. Em was there. We hung out all day that day when he let me sing with him. So I bet he could give you some pretty good advice. He's been able to give me some really good advice, man. And I hope you don't mind me sharing this because this is super personal, but we, we talk a lot about our struggles with addiction. And it's been re he's been really open about that and really encouraging. And him sharing his story with me, and I'm not saying nothing he didn't say in the song, but uh, him sharing his story with me just really was cool to see that vulnerable moment. I mean, we're talking about Michael Jackson. This is Prince. He is Michael Jackson and Prince of this generation. You know what I mean? He's that big of a, I mean, he's one of the biggest selling artists ever, ever across the world. And him still be humble enough to sit in a room with you and go, yeah, man, you know, first time and just like really broke down his sobriety to me. I mean, for anybody who has been relevant for 25 years, I mean, you think about those artists and you can probably count them on two hands, but right. they're, there aren't many, and he's one of them. It's crazy, man. It is, you're talking about a big run. A guy that just comes out and hadn't dropped an album in seven or eight years and had the number one album in the world again. You know, it's just unreal. Is it wild to you that you call these people friends and that you call these people when you need advice or you're looking for support? Or, I mean, those are the people in your phone now? I had a moment the other day where I was driving in the car and I was on the phone with a buddy. And this is, I'm not name dropping, but this sounds like I'm name dropping. It's okay, do it. I was on the phone with time. Cody Johnson. No. And MGK beeped in. And I was like, yo, this just, I need to talk to him about something. I grab it from MGK. And while I'm on the phone with MGK, I think it was Hardy or Morgan beeped in. And I cratched that. And I had a moment where I'm in the car with somebody. And I looked. I go, is this not crazy? But that's what my last three phone calls were, where it just literally went Cody Johnson. Oh, it was Post. It went literally Cody Johnson, MGK, and Post Malone. And I was like, what a wild. And this was in, you know, this was, I'm having to flash over. You know, I'm having to click over like the old days. It's just, it's unreal, man. And the cool thing is, us all being musicians, it's, uh, it's a real kinship because there's very few people doing exactly what we're doing right now mm -hmm. at the level that we're doing it. So we can kind of share tricks of the trade. Uh, we kind of talk about people behind their back, not in a bad way, in a good way. Like, hey, that promoter, that building, did you check out this room? Did you do that? Like, we kind of talk about cool things that are happening in the circuit. It's really cool. Why? I mean... Post Malone didn't need Nashville for his career. No. But, I mean, he has found something really special here. Why musically and personality-wise, in Jelly Roll's opinion, does Post Malone work so well in Nashville and Nashville works so well for Post Malone? One, he is the sweetest human ever. People are always like, Jelly, you're the nicest guy ever. I'm like, I'm glad you haven't met Post Malone. You know what I mean? You know, if you meet Post Malone or John Cena or The Rock, you'll find out I'm the fourth nicest person ever. Um, he is just the sweetest dude, and you feel the realness of how much he loves country music. Uh, the story I tell is this, is that old game we all play is either pass the guitar or the auxiliary cable. 
And it's when you get a bunch of old cowboys around, old musicians, and, and we're all having a cocktail or a doobie, and we're going, what, what, you know, what, da, 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 da. Oh, man, I love that song by John Michael Montgomery. And you start passing the guitar, passing the song, the phone around. What, you know, what you grew up listening to? And Post Malone could sit there and sing country songs with you all night long. If he had it his way, and me and him are similar to this, my, a perfect night for me is in a honky-tonk with country music playing and us singing to each other. You know what I mean? Just that spirit. Uh, he is immersed in country music. He didn't stumble over here knowing a couple of songs or thinking it was an opportune time to do country music. This kid loves country music, man. Who's left on your list of people that you would like to collaborate with? Garth. That's a Garth, good one. Garth, man, I'm, I'm begging. I've, asked, I've publicly said I want to work with Garth so much he probably thinks I'm a stalker. Um, Garth, man, he's, he's up there at my list. Him and James Taylor and Bob Seger, to me, are, you know, some of the greats. Um, I'd love to work with Willie. Uh, he's 92 now, I think, or 91 and still kicking ass, so I think it's still possible. You know what I mean? I got to sing with him a couple times on stage. But even if not work with him or record, it's like, to me, work with somebody is I'd love to come out and sing with Garth, like, or just have that moment together to do what we do professionally in that setting, you know? There's a lot of reasons I think you're doing exceptionally well right now. One of the reasons I don't think people realize is you're a pro. You, I mean, you take this seriously, you're into it, you, you handle your business. From, from your standpoint, musically, where did you develop that trait that you, you not only want to do the job, you want to do that and all the details as well as you do? Yeah, years of just doing it, right? Like the 10,000 hour theory is probably the epitome of who I am. I just kept, I wrote, I wrote a hundred something songs last year. Wow. I don't Did mean, you really? Literally wow. in 2023, I wrote over a hundred songs that I turned into my publisher. And how that works is 20 something will go on my album. The rest will be kind of pitched. Some of them will die. Most of them will never be heard. Some other artist around town will cut a couple of them because it might fit them more than me. But um, yeah, I'm just still exercising the craft every day. I'm obsessed with this stuff. Like, I'm obsessed with music. Like, everything that's happening in it, every time there's a new artist doing something, I want to go find out what they're doing, how they're doing. I want, I'll go watch concerts on days off. I'm doing 100 plus shows a year, and I will still take my days off to go watch concerts. I want to learn. So who involved with the Titans, whether it be from a coaching standpoint, a front office standpoint, a player at a certain position, Whose mindset do you think is most similar to yours in the way they do their job? Believe it or not, I, I'm, I'm betting big on Will Levis. That's what I thought. Yeah. I'm betting really big on Will Levis, and I've seen him on season and off season. I've caught him at events where he was doing the public thing, and I've caught him in private. And there is a sense of intensity in him and a sense of attention to detail and determination that is rare. I mean, you just see it in his eyes. I, I always say that you can see the kind of spark in certain people. That's just that, like, I'm just not going to not let this work. He strikes me as the kind of kid that'll die out there before it doesn't work. And I was a die out there before it did. I, I, I was all in, dude. If music didn't work, I was prepared to get shot or go to prison. I was okay with that. I had made peace with I had one route in life, and it was this. And I think Will Levis feels like he's got one route in life, and he wants to be one of the greatest quarterbacks that ever played in the NFL. That's, I agree. That's born in people. I'm that's, you, and I'm betting on him. I'm betting big on him, man. I, I'm arguing with my friends around the city. Well, he, you has, know what I'm he has the greatness gene, mm -hmm. and that's what you're talking about. The other gene that you have that's so impressive is the grateful gene. Mm -hmm. And no matter how successful, I mean, you're nearly 40, big birthday coming up. <laughs> yes, sir. But <laughs> so many great things are happening, and you don't change. How did you develop the grateful gene the way that you have, and that you keep it? It happened more recently. It happened as I started changing my life. Uh, I started becoming a more loving person, a less hateful person. And as I became less hateful, I became more grateful. Started understanding gratitude more. Uh, in some of my recovery processes from getting off some of the harder drugs, uh, I learned a lot from the rooms that they would teach us about gratitude lists and daily assessments. And man, that stuff really changed my life. Like the concept that every night I make a list of what I do right or wrong that day. Even if it was something as small as, man, I walked by that person and looked at them and I knew they wanted to say hi and I could have just said hi. And I'll go home and think about that and I'll evaluate a little bit like, why didn't I say hi? Was I just, you know what I mean? What was that moment? It, or it could be something huge, being flat to my wife. But I want to go home and take inventory 
And that stuff is really what's helped me anchor in gratitude. You're pulling a lot of people with you in mm -hmm. such a good way, musically and otherwise. That's got to feel fantastic. It feels great. It feels good. It feels good to have purpose. I say it all the time. I used to want to be happy. Now I want to be useful. And that was a paradigm shift in my mind, too. You know, when you start searching for purpose and not for smiles. And what I've learned is when I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and my purpose that God gave me, man, I'm smiling. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't, I don't search for smiles. All of that internal evaluation, now being able to see the fruits of that and being able to see this is what can happen when you, when you do that work. Golly, that's just got to feel good, right? For sure. For sure. And, and what people got to remember is it feels good after. It doesn't feel so good going through it. A lot of emotional work. I had to do a lot of emotional work to get, get to where I am. And I'm still very unstable, but I'm getting better. You know what I'm saying? I'm still very, I still fight with the monsters in, in the closet, but I'm doing better every day. You know, my purpose, I have to read a commercial real quick. All right. <laughs> hey, Titans good. fans, SeatGeek makes it easy to find tickets so you can be part of all the touchdown celebrations. You like that? That was really strong. Whether you're buying or selling football tickets, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek is the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. The most disruptive idea in ticketing, a ticket that works. <laughs> Expect the expected. Seat Geek. <laughs> How'd she do? I thought it was great. Uh -huh. Yelda, you well, got thank that you. Down. <laughs> You've got that one line, line. down. One thank line. you for being in the Snickers hot seat. Yep. Thank, thank you for you. being part of the OTP. Um, and thank you most of all for pulling the Titans along. Mm -hmm. No, you, you carry the flag for us everywhere. And I know you're a real fan and I know you do it anyway, but golly, we appreciate it. No, thank you. I want to be... Post Malone inspires me. I want to be as big a Titan fan as he is a Cowboys fan. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's uh that's what I, I thank you for noticing that. I make it a point every city to make sure I'm rocking something with the T on it, baby. Well, we appreciate you. <laughs> thank you so thank much. For Jelly Roll and Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for being with us for this very special OTP. Tighten up. Tighten up, baby. <laughs> Tighten up. <laughs>